This is also the name of an Aussie football stadium. Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and it is welcoming back to, uh, some mysterious things going on. Like the old Activision logo, which they used for a very long time, then stopped. Uh, kind of, I think, actually. I think they just use a splash screen now, because logos these days are fucking boring. And uh, also, ooh, creative themed logos, but yeah, if you didn't know what this is, this is Spider-Man 2, Enter Electro, spoiled by Sir Daniel Fortescue, because of course he did. Fucking bastard. Uh, but yeah, but anyway, I do apologize for not getting this out uh, a week earlier. I kind of wanted to both put a bit, of a bit of a break for myself after reviewing the monumental task that was the Silent Hill Homecoming review, uh, and in turn also just sort of... You know, have a bit of a chance to sleep because work was busy and I'm fucking tired. But anyway, Spider-Man 2, Enter the Electro. And, uh, kind of unusual for games of this era, it actually has a recap of the previous Spider-Man game for those that didn't play before. A useful feature that a lot of games could use for sequels, and they don't really. Uh, well, I mean, some do in, uh, recent years, actually. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 actually has a recap of the series, which covers it more or less, but... Yeah, this pretty much goes into detail as to what happened last time. Spider-Man's in trouble with the cops because of the whole attack heist thing. Uh, still an ongoing plot point in this continuity, by the way. The Black Cat got injured in the back. Doc Hawk and Carnage were behind some evil shit. And as you'll notice with the reveal of Monster Rock in this next panel, uh, yes, they're using the PC cutscenes as opposed to the PS1 version, which looked significantly worse. Which is quite odd, because Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro is exclusive for the PS1. Yeah, no Dreamcast, N64, or even a PC port. This is PS1 exclusive, and, uh, I'd like to remind you all that this game came out in 2001. PlayStation 2 was already out, and, uh, well, I mean, the Dreamcast was at least still slightly relevant. N64 still had Conker's Bad Fur Day, and the PC definitely could have run the game, so... What the fuck, Activision? Kid mode. Couldn't think to port it to the PS2? Kind of like Half-Life or Red Faction? I don't know. Electro was our main villain. <gasps> oh yeah, we also get newspapers detailing current plot events. Kind of nice, except for the fact that they kind of burn your ears out every time they just spin around. Ech, wished. Welcome, true believers. Stan Lee here to bring you yet another scintillating tale of superhero daring do. Now it appears that trouble has found our arachnid hero yet again. So get ready for a pulse-pounding, web-slinging tale of shocking revelations. Beast, what's got you bounding about? Not a sentinel attack, I hope. Greetings, my web-slinging compatriot. I noticed perchance your diurnal patrol and thought I would provide you with information of a practical and necessary nature. Thanks for the show of interest, Beast. But I've been doing this for a while now. I think I'm okay. Indeed. We shall see. Would you mind telling me what this is? That's my trusty spider compass. It shows me where to go when I'm out and about. Hmm. I do believe you are correct, sir. 
Since you're so smart, why don't you try following me? Bit of an odd choice of companion for this game, but I'm guessing since they didn't have Jennifer Hale on the payroll and therefore no use for Black Cat. Yeah, here's Beast, just bopping about the city. In the twilight hours of the day, the music's mysterious. I don't really know what's going on. This is the sequel, where things are more electronic. More cool, because 2001. But yeah, all the things that Beast is pretty much going to bring up is very basic stuff, and uh, assuming that you haven't already seen uh, my previous commentary on Never Saw Spider-Man, I'll pretty much fill you in on the basics, because uh, this is a game that makes you feel like Spider-Man. Again, you pretty much just have basic swinging from one building to another, and no, it's not free-flowing free like uh, the Spider-Man 2 movie game or pretty much every other Spider-Man game after that, because the only way to feel like Spider-Man is because web swinging and moving it left and right, and therefore it feels like Spider-Man. And, uh, yeah. You can also have uh, plenty of different variations on your web attacks. Again, you can pretty much use your basic webbing attack. Uh, you can use, like, a little uh, web ball, a uh, web fist kind of thing, to basically... I think it's called impact webbing in this game. So, uh, yeah, you use a web ball to split enemies. Uh, you can web yank enemies, which is made of uh, much greater use in this game than it was in the previous one. Uh, you can use the web dome to protect yourself in a little bit of a shield before giving it a little burst attack. And, of course, you can use web fist to power up your punches, even though you'd think that spider webbing would make the punches softer? I mean, at least so I think. I haven't really experimented with spider webbing punches, although I have been hit in the face with a cobweb once, and uh, it was... Uh, quite frightening, actually. I mean, again, not not something that happens y <laughs> always to me, but it's, uh, you know, when it gets to those, like, you know, very chilly autumn days, and you're just sort of going about your daily business, w watching the trees fall from the leaves, watching the leaves fall from the trees, rather, and, uh, you know, then, without completely knowing it, you walk into a cobweb in the middle of a tree, and you're just like, oh god, Spider-Man's after me. God damn, what is with my loose lips tonight? I'm fucking up all over the place. But yeah, to sort of set the scene for Enter Electro, uh, yeah, in the days since Doc Ock and everybody else have been captured from the previous symbiote plot, yeah, no more symbiote fog, but Spider-Man is still on the run from the police. I guess they never pegged him that Mysterio was the one behind the heists, which is quite strange. Well, then again, I suppose... Actually, no, would Spider-Man technically be considered a vigilante? Because, I mean, in this universe, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and, uh... Uh, the Mighty Thor, actually, are superhero teams in this universe, and they get to do basically whatever the fuck they want, so why are they still after Spider-Man? I have no idea. Then again, uh, maybe it's just New Yorkers, you know, because this game occurred a little bit before 9-11, before you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! Or some such bullshit. Anyway, back to the game, good and proper. You have your spidey compass to easily tell you where you need to go in case you're a little bit brain dead. You have hints for Beast to show up and pretty much tell you everything that you need to know, except I'm going to be doing that. And, uh, well, again, it's really just basic stuff. Of course, all of it is in the service of that age-old tradition of making you feel like Spider-Man. Oh, yes, and if you think that's annoying now, by God, my God, by close up to business today, I'm going to be running that joke into the fucking ground because nothing grinds my fucking titties into the ground more than hearing people talk about games that feel like Spider Man. You know, as opposed to feeling like the fucking Blue Beetle or feeling like the fucking Armful Off Boy or the Punisher or Ghost Rider. Whatever's your poison. I'll get into those sort of petty criticisms a little bit later if I'm feeling bitter, but in the meantime, it's pretty much just basic learning shit. Although I suppose, while we still have the time to talk about it, uh, yeah, the reason why Beast is here is also because of an increased X-Men presence. Well, I say increased X-Men presence, I really only mean with uh, Rogue and Professor X, because uh, the training module that was also in the previous game is also back here, and that's pretty much where Spider-Man goes to the Danger Room, uh, has a couple of bants with Rogue and Professor X, and pretty much just goes through basic training, if this segment here wasn't enough to, you know, get you to grips with everything. They up to. Time to do that hero thing, Spidey. He won't get far with that Spidey tracer on him. Hey, whoa, whip freak! 
Oh uh, shit, now we gotta take down some thugs, right down on the street level, which again proves that there's no longer any symbiote fog, and we do actually have ground on ground combat. Specifically done with this level segment to make us feel like Spider-Man! Except it doesn't make you feel like Spider-Man because we never see that existential spiraling pit of shame and misery that is Peter Parker's life and therefore Spider-Man's life. Every victory Spider-Man has is a loss for Peter Parker, and every victory for Peter Parker, sort of, is a loss for Soldano Man. Even though they live in the fucking Marvel Universe where like 10 to 20 other fucking New York based heroes could easily take care of these problems lickety split, but fuck it. Feel like Spider-Man pain. Yeah, uh, this segment specifically is also a bit of a fun one because again, loath as I am to talk about the feel like Spider-Man critique that gets labelled with every Spider-Man game that people even seem to slightly like. Yeah, this pretty much gets you to grips with what a typical night on the town is for Spider-Man, including playing basketball. Rather odd little quirk, but hey, Vicarious Visions were having fun here. And this is also in service of getting us those tasty collectible comics. But yeah, we're gonna be beating up some thugs, uh, saving some businesses from destruction, just doing our hero thing. Oh yeah! By the way, new to Spider-Man's costume here is uh, the web armpits. Hmm, makes you think, since he didn't have them before. Could this be a previous costume of the Soldano Man? Well, I mean, sort of. He does kind of have, like, the web armpits, like, in specific aspects, and then again. Oh, dearie me, a car's on fire! Better put it out with webbing. Which, wouldn't webbing burn anyway? Uh, whatever. Parker, scientist, use brain for smart making to make webs put out fire thing. And yes, of course, uh, web combinations are also back too. In the previous game, we had flame webbing to deal with the symbiotes, but this time, we have a few more variations to deal with specific threats. Yeah, but what they are, well, we'll figure out soon enough. But uh, anyway, apart from that, uh, a bit of trivia that I was supposed to bring up during the basketball uh, thing with Spider-Man earlier on. Kind of unrelated, but again, Spider-Man, where, where the fuck else am I going to bring this up unless of course I play the Amazing Spider-Man game, which I don't have, nor really, but, really bother to care to own, is that uh, Andrew Garfield actually uh, played basketball with some inner city kids while filming the Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know. A bit of a sweet thing to do, actually, because I always do kind of like it when you you see actors, like, I mean, in costume, playing around with, you know, uh, kids and people just hanging around the set. I don't know, it makes them feel human rather than making celebrities out to be these monolithic godlike figures that we dedicate our lives to in lieu of our own pathetic existence. By the way, I think it's actually possible to have, um, uh, the spraying of the water hit Spider-Man, actually. At least I think I... I think I managed to get it to happen once, but that was a long time ago. But anyway, that is enough Soldano Manning for the time being. We're going to chase that motorcycle with that mysterious hooded figure. Oh, dearie me, has the organization infiltrated the world of Spider-Man? Has the Master of Masters decided to indulge himself and make himself feel like Spider-Man? I mean, again, if like the hints towards Star Wars are anything to go by in Kingdom Hearts 4, then who knows, really? Could Quadratum be our New York City? Well, probably not really, but... In any case, uh... Yeah, Andrew Electro, we're pretty much getting things off to a pretty big start. To kind of talk about what Electro was doing, rather pathetic as a villain as he might be in many continuities, yeah, he basically stole an amplification device for his electricity powers, and uh, while Spider-Man doesn't exactly know what Electro is doing quite yet, it seems that Electro has amassed himself a little merry band of gangs to do his bidding and uh, basically collect a secret briefcase. Yes indeed, we are quite literally chasing a mystery box. So it seems our hooded figure is J.J. Abrams, hiding his Spider-Man movie plans in the mystery box. Uh, but yeah, to kind of uh, talk about the symbiote fog thing that was there in the first game to sort of cover up the draw distance. It's not a thing in this game, but at the same time though, again, if you fall off a roof building towards uh, these specific rooftop segments, yeah, you will die, so uh, don't fall down like a moron. And even though that we should have called for backup, like the Fantastic Four, or, or the Avengers, or Daredevil, who was active in the previous game, yeah, Spider-Man's left on his lonesome again to cross the bridge and ch chase after his villains all on his lonesome. Actually, no, even the Punisher is alive in this universe, so shouldn't he be doing something about this? Uh, whatever. I mean, I mean, to be completely honest, like, I mean, when you try and bring other Marvel heroes into its own 
universe, you just sit here wondering why anybody would, like, ever commit crime in the Marvel- I mean, not just the Marvel Universe, but, like, New York specifically, because, like, there are 10 to 20 fucking superheroes on patrol, on top of the fucking police presence, so why would you ever do anything illegal ever again? Yeah, Quish. But anyway, we've got random thugs, all voiced by D. Bradley Baker on the roof, and all have random- hey, It's Spider-Man! Get him! Or, you should have called for backup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, Enter Electro, in terms of reception, actually, again, it's not quite seen as favorably as the Neversoft game, but at the same time, though, it does continue a lot of those, you know, very comic booky quirks and charms that the first game had. And in and of itself, in terms of being a sequel, it is remarkably solid. Like, again, I, while it's not as favorably held as the Neversoft game, at the same time, it's also not seen negatively. It's just seen as either more of what you love from the previous game, or just, you know, a game that does a few unique things that might just edge out the first one for you, so... Yeah, if nothing else, it shows that Vicarious Visions, even though they were often labelled back then, and I suppose even now to some extent, are labelled as the B-Team sequel that you just palm off your projects to, they are very talented developers in their own right, and... To be completely honest, I think they did really good with Enter Electro. My props all around, even though I think, uh... Actually, what are Vicarious Visions doing these days? I, I, I know they're a part of Activision, and therefore... Again, I don't, I'm not really too sure about the Microsoft acquisition deal, if it's finished or is being finalized at this point in time, but... Yeah, I think uh, Vicarious Visions were folded into uh, the Blizzard portion, which basically means they're on fucking World of Warcraft... Whatever support, or whatever the fuck Blizzard are doing these days, part of the controversy. Yeah, well... That's, uh, topics for another day, I suppose. In the meantime, however, we've got to continue chasing that motorcycle, which could be halfway across the city. There is no... Well, I mean, at least not for this level. There is no, like, scorpion-style get-to-place before time runs out, so... You are pretty much free to swing around to buildings and continue that feeling of being Spider-Man. And yes, this will be a running joke throughout the commentary. I hope you're prepared to hear my digressing remarks about how irritating it is to hear those phrases. But on that note, I am Solid Scully, keep it new metal, and next time, we take down some thugs. Oh yeah. You're being followed. I know. You go on ahead. I've got something planned. <laughs> Looks like this is the place. Now I know I have that invite here somewhere. Hmm. If this were a movie, someone would spring a trap right about now. Uh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.